Okay, so got lots of things going on here. back maybe. Kind of Very happy with the extra peripherals. Not happy that I had to pay for it all. Things I might not use, but I'm just happy to see this arrive. This was not available. Okay, so I'm actually going to do a little bit of an installation video now. Okay. So, so open three, two, one, close one, two, three. So. So you need to push that all the way down, and then now it's just going to sit there all by itself, which is kind of cool. And we close one, two, three. So here. My suggestion would be to make that screw a little longer. Now this is supposed to ratchet when it gets tight. I can't see how it's going to do that. Okay, that's tight. It's nothing. To do. Oh, there's the ratchet. Okay, three, one, two, two. So again, it doesn't seem like the screw is grabbing. Pressure. I like to put that kind of pressure on the door. Okay. 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 I kind of like this uh, idea of, of wrapping it. Keep your hands off of it. So I don't know if I should do that or not, but it's something to do. Alright, so we've got the processor now inside the motherboard. Alright, so the very first thing, so I've got the motherboard, or so I've got the motherboard set up, I've got it uh, hooked up to the anti-static to be safe. And uh, so the very first thing is to put all your pins in the right place. I just realized that this motherboard has a listing for the type it is, and you can match it. But all I did is set it down, and most of them matched. And of course, uh, this case is made for a server motherboard. Well, it fits one. And this is a little tiny motherboard. We've already tested all this. These all line up great. Get it set so you can see what's 
see all the screw holes. Not perfect, it's kind of pivoting a bit. There we go. So that this is a huge case, a little tiny motherboard. But uh, that's going to be great for cooling. We put the, the water cooler fans up top. So, um, pretty neat. So, anyways, I'm going to screw this in. And they say not to over tighten this. I went through the motherboard manual, and this is the next step. So, put this the processor in, which I've already done. And the next step was to put in the motherboard. So, I'm just getting it. Uh, kind of a getting it tight and it's a little bit of a squeeze turn trying not to over tighten it so then your screw is straight so that you don't cross through it cross through it and definitely there we go that's a nice one a little squeeze turn I did a whole bunch of build videos on creating a supercomputer with a server board, but because that continually failed, it would be successful on the box, and then as soon as I put it in this case, it would short out, I believe, that's what's happening, and uh, Super Micro kept saying something about the case was shorting it out. They have a $2,000 case. I'm just not going to walk down that road. It's taking me 18 months. And the great thing about it is it brought me right to the point where this processor was uh, released. And I have never, ever in my life bought latest technology. I have always kind of bought behind the curve. But this is such a leap forward. I felt it was the right move. Now what I love about this board, it's got a start button, a reset button, safety buttons. Uh, these things right here, you can actually use a tester and see what's failing without having to, you know, test components and pull them out or swap them out or whatever. So, but anyways, this was the, the next step. So I'm going to do that. Get all the camera set up, so I might as well start doing some build videos. And I want to get this thing up and running. Very exciting. I'm a little sad this board is so small. And just for the, I mean, I love that. But just for the reason that I have such a big case, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna stay nice and cool, that's for sure. So, and I will continue to put, well, I have Jack in there. I got all nine screws in. And gave them all that little snug turn. And it's, I mean, it's sitting there solid. Okay, so it almost, from what I'm reading, that the, the, the power supply that I have is perfect for this motherboard. It's got the exact uh, power structure for this motherboard and it's rated the right thing. It's 1200 watts. And that is exactly what should be powering. So uh, we'll just go through this again. This is the Silverstone 1200 watt. Driver Gold Evolution, and uh, unfortunately, I've got to install it upside down. So the fan is on top. See, what's nice about this is there's enough space here that it's not in getting uh, tangled in what is happening on the motherboard. So, you know, all in all, said and done, there won't be a lot of extra space with the cooling on the top. Let's just kind of drop that in there and see. So that's going to be great. Let's go with something like that. I think that's fine. Okay. So, kind of following what they said, uh, in my mind, I would have put the, the, this in first. But then I guess you got to kind of get the motherboard in underneath all the all of these cables. So anyways, we'll, we'll figure that out. So I think that this might be a good time just to stop. I'll, I'll put the, the power supply in and I'll hook up the, the basic cabling and then we'll jump back into the video. Okay, 
So the next thing in the book is it talks about putting the RAM in. Now there's a couple interesting quirks here that if they're going to talk about putting RAM in, they should put it in the section where you're looking at the order of installation. But they've got it in a, se a separate place, but I've already read through it. Now the other thing that's interesting is that the colors are all wrong. Those black, gray, but this is going gray black. So anyways, if you put it in all the grays, which makes sense, because that's what the picture's showing, then your RAM is going to be proper. So if you're putting four sticks and you have eight slots, they even show you how to put five in, which is kind of cool. So it's very encouraging. You could just buy one from the RAM at a time. Okay, so I want to build this one. Put a nice little click happening on it. Nice about this is going to be a little more room and movement. Slamming all these guys in. Feels cool. <coughs> this is cool. That one just goes right in. So easy. <coughs> okay, let's take the one we just had trouble with. Slips it down. It's very easy to get these things turned around. Oh, it went in there nice. Now this has a cooler. And it's got a heat pipe. It's got a fan inside. I get it. That's what's through. If I did have it the right way, I'll do this. Okay, so uh, one set of RAM goes upward, one goes downward. And the motherboard's bending. So I got enough pushing. So I just want to make sure everything's in place. Alright, so. I mark myself in the book. What's next? So there's the ring. I'm just going to drop this thing down. And come out here. And that definitely looks a lot cleaner. You know, I want to get this computer built, but I don't want to rush this build so that something suffers over it, even the looks. So, and that's the beautiful thing is the computer that I've, I've built three years ago, I mean, it's still working perfectly. That's one thing I want to say is moving computers sometimes, once you get the thing up and running, packing it up and moving somewhere could be a danger. But from everything I've looked at, this processor is very superior. It looks like it has clips to work. So you want to look at the orientation of the squares and the rounded edges. Try to do the same thing. There we go. That looks pretty good. We can do a luxury little stiff laser. Okay, so we got here's my page mark. Good. So it's this and these. One and two. Okay, so now we're gonna hook up our hard drive. Now I'm not gonna start with just the SATA. I might have to, but I'm I don't want to start with the SATA. So it's not saying to put in these peripheral cards, they're just saying to put in the, the hard drive. So, this is the hard drive. I think the first thing I need to do is Zenith Extreme, because I know that that goes here. Yeah, 
I think I can sneak this underneath here. Nope, you know what? I had already figured this out. So. PCI times four here. So we want to use this big one, 16.3. So I'm just, I, in my gut, I feel that if this is in the faster slot, it's going to operate better. Give it 16 lines instead of four. First of all, I want to talk about this. I found this slot. It's got a little blocker on it. It says DIM2. I was like, what the heck is that? It's like this extra RAM slot. Then I found this that I thought was maybe a wireless thing, maybe. I don't know. And it says somewhere ROG DIM2. So that's obviously for that slot. We'll get to that, but it's a, I was kind of excited that I found that. This is a very cool thing. Because trying to plug all those little things in there, it's really difficult. So you get this little connector. This is so smart. I've never seen anything like this before, but boy, I'm very happy with it. Oh, and that's that's for these guys. Okay. So again, we can do some cable management because I'm bringing them from the top, but they really can come in the bottom. So I'm going to just do that, except the only problem is, is our water cooler is attached, so I'll pull it out of here, otherwise it's going to crash and burn. We have our DIM2. Flashlight has a magnet, so it's hanging on. Okay, so here's all of my switches, they can come down. that up. Okay, so let's just do it. So power, so just got to get this right. The orientation is that the, the one that doesn't have a pin. Oh, I'll go back. Just like that. Okay. So I think it's power like that. Ground. Um, I don't think it matters. I'm gonna put it out. Hard drive LED, okay, it goes here. And then reset, reset switch. That's a what? T plus. There it is. Uh oh. Sensor backwards. So I want to turn my power switch backwards. Everything's facing the same way. And then, P minus lines up with T minus, P plus with P plus. That's what, this is one thing that I had no idea how to do on that server board. It was a bunch of guessing. Now look how simple this is. Boom, all those guys are hooked up. That is really beautiful. That is the, that's the one thing I've always hated in setting up computers, and it's been fixed. So I am very happy. All right, so let's uh, just go through the things that I figured out. So way here in the back corner is where you connect your uh, HD audio. This is USB. This is USB. 3.2, 3.1. So there's different connectors. And then the speaker, I couldn't figure out where that goes. So there's this little tiny space right on the corner, right above where you hook the switches up. That's where the speaker goes. It says the next thing to do here is to install the video card. So I put this panel back on. And what I'm hoping that I didn't put the video card in and try to put the panel in, I'm going to try it with. It's ASUS. It should work. So we will see. So lining up the pins, and 
there's a hook. And it's just tight on there. Oh, okay. Well, that's what they said to do next. That's what I've done. Doesn't really look like you can do SLI with this board, even though you know you could use all four slots and put four video cards in. Um, but you couldn't put these dual cards in. You have to put single ones in. So, anyways, I think a dual card would be great. So, uh, only because this fan is right up against this, but that's the slot that's got to go into. See what they say? Boy, that's kind of coming out of that slot. I'm not totally keen on this idea of not, of not having a screw. Uh, they do have the screw hole, so I could put a screw in. Let's do that. It's the same as a case screw that will leave this open, I think. But I just think to secure the video card with the screws, wise. There we go. So I feel much better about that. The other issue that I had, and uh, a few things. Uh, first of all, the fans at the top. Um, there were two holes at the top that really lined up with the two holes on the fan. So I put two screws in there, and then of course it wasn't very steady. So the only other thing I could do was get a uh, one screw in the corner. So there is a whole bunch of holes uh, that don't have screws through. I've tried, the screws are not long enough. In fact, this EVGA um, water cooler is probably the worst thing about all of this. Now I did went and watch the video and <laughs> there was another fan connector for this fan tucked in between, totally hidden. So these two are connected. And the connection here, uh, to motherboard, instead of being a four pin where you can control automatically through BIOS the speed of the fan, it is a three pin, but it does go on to the four pin. So that's kind of interesting. So I'm just gonna take this, uh, it's a split thing. And uh, he was saying in the video to be very cautious because these are open fans, which are great for eliminating the noise. But if you get the cord stuck in them, it's not going to be too good. So let's just hook that up. I'm trying to get pretty close to the time when I can test everything here. So uh, that might not be the best thing. Things are kind of floating around here a bit. I'm going to go back behind this. Hook that up. Okay, and that should probably push out just in the middle like that and push out into the back side of the computer and maybe this guy too. And we can clean that up when we're working on the back. Now, here is uh, another complication with the water cooler. It has a USB connection which I have fed around. So I've only got one on the computer. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. So I've actually made a mistake here. So I'm going to shut off the video, cancel my order for USB. There it is. So I actually need a triple connection. The double the splitter isn't enough. So I'm going to go do that right now. Okay, so I just realized that my USB on the front actually has two connectors. We're gonna pull that off. We're a one to four splitter. So, but I've got to take the USB water cooler and plug it in because this is what controls your speed and your fan and all that stuff. So, once the four, uh, one to four splitter comes, I can hook these up and I'll have the USB on the front. Okay, so that resolved that. The other thing I took some time to figure out was these little temperature gauges. You know, into your video card. They look a little messy, so I clean that up. And I like to put one on the processor. I'm still going to hook up the fans. Uh, oh, I did put the power in to this. 
Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say was this ROG DIMM 2 that goes into that slot is actually for the new little drives. And I realized that my PCI slotted SSD card actually just has one of those little, it's just, all it is is an adapter with one of those little cards on it. And so if you have a small one, you know, so that's, a, so that's, that's so you can slide it into here and go walking through. And that's also what's underneath here is another one of those. So I really did need the slotted SSD card, although I don't know, sometimes there's different things with speed and stuff. This is jumpers, it's a little complicated. So it looks like you could put one on each side. Those slots look exactly the same. So you could put a card on each side of this. So, you know, that's just maybe future extension. Oh, the other thing I got to think about is where the heck I'm going to put my hard drives. Now, usually you would put a hard drive in here, but these are all designed for SSDs. They've got one little bracket in here for a regular hard drive, a physical hard drive. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get more of those. Kind of brought in the, the sensors. I kind of wrapped them around so they were shorter. Here, kind of in behind where the cable management systems are. Uh, I've also hooked up my Blu-ray drive so that I can install Windows. So I think that's it. So I'm gonna plug it in. It's kind of scary. I think I've been avoiding doing this because I failed so much with the supercomputer. So here we go. Let's see what happens. are lit up but she's not starting. So I'm gonna try the start button on the motherboard. Nothing. It's supposed to be a little light that tells you that the CPU is ready that's not working. Alright so we have a problem somehow somewhere. Something's not ready. So my gut says Oh, that's all changing color. My gut says to <coughs> remove some of the cards. Well, the other thing I was concerned about was this video card only has one of the cables that it needs. Those other kind of cables that my monitor is going to take it to. So I'm going to take this card out. That kind of is the feeling that I feel like it could be causing this problem. See, it looks like it wants to start. And then there's it's hitting some sort of. Oh! And the other thing I forgot to mention is that this is a power connection on the motherboard. And it is this old connector, but it's pointing down and my power supply is there. I could not put my power supply at the top. So I don't know, that could be the problem. So it looks like it wants to start, but something is keeping it from starting. It sucks because it's all built, everything's in place. So I'm gonna just keep removing stuff until I figure out what's going on here. Let's get this machine up and running. So uh, I think you can see the screen here, how fast Windows is going to come up. Uh, what I really like is this little thing here that's telling me, so Matt is checking memory right now, checking the CPU. I was always wondering what the heck is going on, why doesn't it start right away? Now it's checking the monitor, monitor's on. logo and there's windows up and running that's how fast it boots this is fantastic love that all right so that's going to talk about a few things here 
first of all, the BIOS that they gave us, the, the little USB drive, has nothing on it. <laughs> I took it to the other computer, went and checked, and the BIOS is the original BIOS on the board. So I download the newest BIOS. It said it had to be out of the zip. Nothing. I can't get this thing to update. It's got an easy BIOS update. It's not seeing it. There's a BIOS uh, port at the back. It's got a, a white, uh, kind of a white thing around it. It's a BIOS. I plugged it into there. I put the zip back in thinking maybe it needs to have it in the zip. No, it doesn't see it. An easy BIOS doesn't seem to work. The other thing I want to mention is that I am pretty sure that Microsoft has somehow paid off all these vendors to stop the installation of Windows 7. And I say that because every time I tried to install Windows 7, the mouse and keyboard would go dead and then you couldn't proceed. And so I went to a website, all kinds of people are having this problem. And I tried every one of their solutions, spending hours in BIOS turning things on and off. Now the nice thing about this board is I went so far as turning off my USB 2, which means my mouse and keyboard didn't work at all. Restart. How the heck do you turn that back on? Well, it has a CMOS reset button at the back, and it's it's a really good one. I've seen CMOS just totally mess up a, a BIOS when you reset it, take the, take the battery out, but this is just push a button. So that is fantastic. I tried two different versions of Windows 7, I don't know if every time. I tried every solution that they had. Some people said, wait 15 minutes, so I waited 15 minutes. I turned all kinds of stuff on, it didn't work. So then I got an idea, I thought, well, I'll install Windows 10 on a different a disk, because I've got, I ended up buying another, for that server motherboard, I, it doesn't take the, the S.2 or the uh, PCI slotted SSD card, which is the same thing, by the way. <laughs> discovered that. So I installed that on a little SSD. I had to drive or buy from the other, other board. And so Windows went in there, Windows 10 went in there, and then Windows 10 put itself on the other hard drive. And so even when it was disconnected, Windows 10 was in there stepping in the way. So I deleted all that stuff. And then I, when I went to install Windows 7 with Windows 10, it gave me an error message, so Windows 10 stopped it. And then I tried making a USB version of Windows 7, same thing, hung up, and then worse, blue screen. And so that wasted a good day. So my conclusion is that Microsoft does not want us using Windows 7 in any way, shape, or form. And somehow they've paid off these motherboard manufacturers. I, I could be totally wrong. <laughs> it is just conspiracy theory. It could be as simple as people say it's just a, a USB 3 issue. But I turned all that stuff off and still no avail. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is this S2 card that I have taken my PCI slotted SSD card and put it on this S2 card. And then there's this little uh, connector. I believe this is the one. This goes on top of that. I didn't realize that, but that goes on top of that. And then you put in a fan that sits right here over top of everything. But I didn't want to do that yet because it would block the, the image. And the computer is freaking beautiful. Uh, all the R RBG. I had to install um, the EVGA software and then that worked. And of course you gotta plug this in to USB 2 slot. And of course I got two USB slots on the front, so I had to go buy a splitter for that. Um, these hard, hard drive bays are made for SSDs. And I don't know, I'm looking at it thinking that if it didn't have the centerpiece, and I'm not sure. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Let's just do this live. Oh, look at that. Yeah, see, that's what I thought. So you're not going to be able to see that very well. But I can put a regular drive into this. Let's just see, and then line up the screw. Yeah, sure enough. Okay, so I didn't realize that. I kind of had the thought today, maybe that'll work. And it did. So I can put my drives into these drive bays, which is kind of exciting. I did order a three drive bay for up top. So that's that's going to be fine. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is this wonderful Republic of Gamers uh, Zenith Extreme 10G card 
doesn't work in the very beginning. So they have a, a network port at the back, that's what you use, and then you have to get drivers to install. So a lot of the things that you have to install, I don't understand the BIOS, but you know what the, the old saying is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I, I maybe it's a good thing that the BIOS didn't update, but I've got to figure that out. Um, I've done BIOS before, you just put it on a, on a USB stick, stick it in the back, start the computer, and it installs. This is different. So, and the other thing is, is they say it's hang up free or, or it's a, a BIOS update that doesn't, doesn't crash, crash free, I think that's what they call crash free BIOS, which is untrue because I've clicked around in it and it just locks up the whole thing. So I just backed out of that and I'm just going to stay away from it. So I think I'm at the stage now. I've got a whole bunch of stuff installed uh, in the computer and uh, I did a little test. Things seem to be booting up fine, but I'm kind of crammed in here with the computer on the desk in front of the monitor. It's not really a good time to try it. So I think I'm gonna move it over and hook it up to my other monitors and see what we can do. Maybe I'll swap some hard drives and stuff. I don't know, but I'll figure that out. But that's really kind of separate from the build video. So I just wanted to wrap up the build video and I've got another unboxing video on here to get off. I just wanted to wrap everything up and give kind of a summary. So, I mean, so far I'm very happy. Oh, the other thing I want to mention is this Asus card only has one monitor out and I was kind of freaking out. I'm like, what? I'm not going to go back to one monitor. Uh, but what it does have is the television, I can't remember the name of the connector. Television connector's got one, two, three, four of those. And uh, so I, did, I do have a really long cable for that, so I will try to see if I can set up dual monitor for that. If I can, then I will broadcast with this tonight. We'll play some player unknown, because I've been dying to play that game with a computer that can handle it, and uh, take it from there. So anyways, that's it. I'm gonna wrap this up and uh, do a little bit more. I mean, we still got to get sides and stuff out in the case and stuff like that, but uh, because the way this case is set up and the way it works, so it's basically viewable on this, let's call this the left side of the case. Uh, I'm going to rearrange my whole system and eventually get this on the left side. Right now it's just going to sit in front of all my rack, but eventually I'll get it in there. So this has been, uh, you know, other than this port going dead on the power supply, which is a fault of the server motherboard, nothing to do with this build and then I figured that out this has really been uh, and the Windows Windows issue this has really been a trouble free build um, some things you know that I was concerned about um, the the mounting uh, on the motherboard these were, were starting to strip but this um, system this this bracket that comes with the, the processor is so fantastic I don't think you need to worry about it um, the RAM uh, seemed to fit better in some slots than others, so don't force it. Just move it, change it around. That's my advice. The ASUS video card does sit over top of this. I didn't realize this thing all lit up. There's actually, a, I, I believe it's a U.2 card that goes in underneath here, which I believe is another hard drive type. I don't really know about that, it's all new to me. So I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants. I don't have anything, I'm not scripted or anything here. So I'm just yapping and uh, hoping that this makes sense. So that's my wrap up video for building this beautiful system. And uh, uh, I'll do a review on it all uh, once I've got it up and running and in its position. So that's it for now. All right, so here I got the EVGA logo lit up. So I have to get a splitter. Still have to get uh, my hard drive drawers. But it's come on. Extreme. You just have to go to the website, register your product, the 
ABGA. Well, that's done. Now, um, I'm noticing in the on the website it says there's a, a bracket that attaches here and a fan that goes on there, but that would cover up the RAM. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. Let's just feel the little hard drive. Ooh. Yeah, it's warm. That's really warm. Alright, I don't have to do it.